Yes. So what do you think like how much uh, does a captain earn in an airline On an average it will range from somewhere Hello everyone welcome back to India's number one pilot podcast where pilots come and share their experience for all of you and we would like to thank all of you who have shown love and support for our podcast episodes if you haven't checked previous two episode please do check and let us know in the comment section how do you like it and today in this podcast we are going to discuss the salaries and career progression of a pilot so we have today with us captain neha who is going to share her knowledge about career progression as a pilot and their salary structure thank you thank you so much uh, for the welcome and uh, i am super super excited and happy to share the insight regarding the career progression of a pilot as well as the how the upgrade takes you to the great level of success in terms of monetary benefits and that we are going to discuss which is the most interesting topic of the today's discussion so we are going to split this video in two major components one is the career progression as a student pilot to commercial pilot which is during the training before cpl and then the second part is after cpl as you join an airline then how that progression goes that we are going to see in these two sections so to know the entire career progression all the way to become a captain and even further later if you wish to stay tuned till the end of the video yes so career as a pilot so first firstly you are a student you complete your 10th you complete your 12th and after that you decide to become a pilot so i'll let you know the stages from so, your 12th standard to the cpl yes the entire training phase you can say how it goes all the way from your uh, student pilot license how do you start your journey as a student pilot license with that one stripe on your shoulder then after how you upgrade to ppl and cpl and since yes. you have done it recently i would like to hear that from you yes so firstly after your 12th standard or after you have done your graduation when you join a flight school you go there as a student pilot yes so basically student pl- uh, pilot how do you become a student pilot student pilot is basically enrolling into a flight school and applying a uh, applying and filling the form for a student pilot you get a student pilot license so if you have to become a student pilot in india there is a oral exam which you have to give for okay. the navigation meteorology air regulation technical general and specific so based on that oral exam there is an application made to dgca okay and then you get the student pilot license and you need to have a class 2 medical as well along with that you need to have the frtol restricted once you have all these things in place then you are a student pilot and start your first flight okay. that is how it goes in india okay yeah. for us in the states we did not have to give an exam apart from one knowledge test uh, which is pretty much straightforward mcq 100 100 mcq questions so the process is bit different in india So for US once you get your student pilot license you uh, start flying with your instructor you will be assigned an instructor and you will start your private pilot training okay so in that stage you don't have any stripes on your shoulder yet but once you become a private pilot once you clear the exams and the practical checks for private pilot you get one stripe on your shoulder that is your okay. private pilot license okay So for private pilot what all exercises that you do uh, in your training So in and what all uh, things are covered in that So in private pilot license like a private pilot training uh, you basically learn the airport operations like you learn the traffic pattern you learn few maneuvers like power off stall power on stall steep turns then uh, of engine of landing so first you start with very basic like straight and level then climb yes. turns and yes. then after you yes there's, there is there is there is very basic maneuvers right. and after that you go on to a uh, steep turns okay then you learn about engine failure then you learn different types of takeoffs and landing 
so uh, there's a uh, soft fill take off soft fill landing then there is normal take off normal landing right. and then uh, short fill take off short fill correct, landing correct so these are all the maneuvers which uh, we learn in the private pilot and we basically fly with respect to visual flight rules which is called as the VFR flying correct so before you get the private pilot license you will have a solo right yes so yeah yeah so you will have a solo released and thereafter you get private pilot license immediately or you still fly for the hours like it depends on uh, the flight school but in my case i uh, did my 10 hour solo before i got my private pilot license okay. so once you do the 10 hour solo and after that you again go to a check ride so here in private pilot license you will be eligible to fly on a vfr pattern right yes so it's only by visual flight rules yes it's only by visual flight rules so have you had experience where the weather goes bad and your flight gets cancelled and that that was VFR? that was a normal thing right. for us <laughs> yes okay. because uh, when the ceilings are below 1500 we hmm. usually uh, cancel our flight because we cannot go for a cross country Yeah. If if it's in That a practice That is a condition area. of VMC, right? Yes. Hmm. So if we want to go to practice area, we will see the ceiling of nearby area. But if we want to go for cross country ceiling below fifteen hundred, we would just cancel correct, our flight. Correct, correct. And then you used to uh, fly in the VFR up to visibility of five kilometers. Yes. Oh. So um. All right. So that is about the private pilot. So now you have one stripe. Yes. So. Okay. Actually, I have three. Ha! Now, <laughs> no, you <but> have <laughs> one stripe once you get the private pilot yes. license, right? So once okay. you get the one stripe, then uh, again uh, for uh, United States, uh, you will have to appear for instrument knowledge test. Correct. So once you pass that exam, then you uh, start your flying. Correct. So now the uh, flying would be as per instrument flight rules. So you okay, will, you okay. will have to fly by the means of instruments. Correct. it is pretty much like understanding the concept of right. uh, the instruments correct okay like you fly uh, you, you do the ils approach you do the vor approach so now why is this instrument approach and instrument rating required like let's say as uh, chintan mentioned that whenever the visibility goes down or if the ceiling is below in that case you cannot operate a flight but let's imagine you are flying with passengers and with so many passengers on board and just because of some variation in the weather you have to cancel the flight or you have to delay the flight it is so much inconvenience right for the passengers so there is something called as the instrument rating which is a requirement along with the cpl so that you can fly in the instrument meteorological conditions, conditions yes. okay so whenever the visibility goes to below 5 km or ceiling less or 1500 ft you can still operate and uh, fly the aircraft so that is the next step in us so like in us with private pilot there is one stripe whereas in india with student pilot you have one stripe if you do private pilot in india you have two stripes okay so there are differences in the stripes so that's why we are explaining you everything right from student pilot all the way till you become a captain and even further so stay tuned yeah. yes so basically instrument i felt was the most convenient way right. uh, to fly i when when you when someone asked me what's your uh, favorite means of flying like is it vfr or ifr correct. it's always ifr be it day or night correct correct, correct. because you get uh, assistance yes, uh, from uh, atc and uh, i feel it's much safer to fly ifr correct. than vfr correct. unless your instrument stops working <laughs> <laughs> correct correct <laughs> so that is because uh, if in case in vfr you don't see the particular uh, you know checkpoint you feel you are lost if yes. you are if you don't have any backup instrument if you don't have a hmm. gps or if you don't have a backup instrument like uh, you know any na uh, conventional navet as vor so in that case you will be there are a lot of cases which has ha- which have happened in the flight school where students are yes. lost when they don't know how to you know follow the gps and so that is the reason why it's a great way to navigate so basically to direct yourself now from one place to another so basically yes. ifr you have all the ifr charts you have all the jepson charts 
there all the altitudes are mentioned right yes. so it is much more safer you just have yes, to yes and uh, atc guides correct. you if there is any changes to be made correct, in your flight correct. path or your altitude correct, atc will give you instructions like climb 2000 feet or correct, look correct. for this traffic correct correct right true, so it true. becomes very convenient and once you get instrument rating like uh, it's become it becomes very easy to uh, fly a plane because correct. anytime the weather gets bad or deteriorates so you have an option to switch from vfr to ifr correct. or if you want to like uh, switch from ifr to vfr you can fly it okay correct correct during the uh, instrument rating training the main thing is like how you uh, study the procedures and how you uh, apply this knowledge while you are flying Be- instrument flying i think is more about how much you study uh, at home correct, rather than correct, flying correct, flying correct. is just straight and level flight but how do you read the instrument definitely, plate definitely. and how do you interpret it with the atc instrument right? jeps in approach chart yes. in route charts as well as the interpretation of the vor dials or uh, you know hsi dials and in, in navigation display you need to interpret it well in order to navigate so yes that's amazing so after so what all exercises do you do in this instrument in instrument we do approaches so it is ils approach vor approach arnav approach and uh, apart from that like i flew in the glass cockpit so we used to do approach based on great. standby instruments great, great. okay mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so the instructor used to uh, turn off the g1000 and correct, we correct, used correct. to do the approach uh, based on uh, the standby instruments okay 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 so i have done my flying on conventional uh, six yes. pack instrument back then there was no glass cockpit in uh, aircraft which was there in india and that was the reason um, i have uh, learned by those you know dials there was nothing uh, like garmin wherein you have all fancy navi display multi function display right yes. mfd so on which you have uh, the data of obstacles the some traffic information the yes. you know so basically uh, with the g1000 system it's very easy to fly a plane you can load correct. the whole approach on the on your system and you can just follow it right, and right. you'll go land your correct, the plane correct, correct. and uh, for traffic advisory it shows you where the traffic is how correct. far is the traffic correct, correct. and at what altitude from your reference like mm-hmm. from your reference mm-hmm. altitude mm-hmm. how high or low the traffic is mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so it becomes very easy to fly a plane when correct. it's equipped with the glass cockpit correct correct that's great So after this, uh, you then get the instrument rating, right? That yes. is, uh, you have an instrument check, right? So you have instrument check, right? You did on which aircraft did you do it? I did it on Cessna one seventy two. Cessna one seventy two, great, great. So after that, you get two stripes. Instrument stri- rating, Inst- and it's two stripes. Okay, okay. In the great. US, for great. India, I guess it, it would be three. In oh. India, there is no instrument rating. a separate phase which is okay. there which it is a part of the entire cpl process itself so you get the instrument rating along with the cpl so there is no separate um, instrument rating which you get before you get commercial so you okay. have it endorsed along with the cpl itself so there is no addition of any stripes and in india there is no requirement that you have to clear private pilot check right and you have to clear private uh, pilot license papers before you go for commercial you can directly clear commercial uh, pilot license exams which are conducted by the dgca and uh, of getting the spl which is oral exam and the dgca only these set of exams which we have mentioned for navigation meteorology air regulation technical general technical specific once you clear these then you are done with all the exam part except for rtr which is the <laughs> addition <Yes. laughs> okay and uh, then you can finish entire flying and you get the third stripe as a commercial pilot license once and for all okay so, so is it, it is. like are you given the option like for commercial training is it like single engine or multi engine so generally uh, as a cost saving measure so commercial we do it on single engine because obviously multi engine cost. cost is much mm-hmm. more compared to that of single engine so obviously it will vary depending on flight school to flight school but um, 
the multi engine cost will be about 3 to 4 times more than a single engine cost yes, per hour yes. so that is the reason why it is preferred that you do all the commercial on the single engine and then you do multi engine add on add on so as a part of uh, even cpl you can do it now so multi engine you just have to give day check night check and if you want then ir check but it's not required for a commercial pilot license so we so we are done with the instrument two stripes yes now the third one right two stripes and then moving on to the third one so that yes, is the commercial awesome. pilot license okay so for cpl we we also get option like uh, as you told like single engine with multi add on or go for multi correct. i opted for multi engine correct so i flew the da42 i felt like the single engine maneuvers are a bit challenging especially the single engine landing because uh, you have to single keep engine landing yes. in multi engine aircraft yes huh. single engine landing <laughs> in a multi engine aircraft yeah okay. that means one engine so failure landing one <laughs> yeah. engine is hmm. uh, like inoperative hmm. and uh, it's causing drag right, right? and you, when you are landing you have to see which engine like left or right, right. is fail and from which side the wind is correct, and correct, accordingly correct. you have to land Correct, right. correct, correct. It is. So it's it it's very challenging, correct. and uh, all the single engine maneuvers I think are challenging in the uh, like commercial pilot training. Mm-hmm. And uh, as you are training for the commercial pilot license, your like sta- the standards of training is high. So correct. there's there's very thin margin of error. So let's correct. say you are asked to maintain a flight level of two thousand. Okay, so there is I would say hundred feet, feet or fifty. Yes, two thousand oh. feet. <laughs> so I guess there is a maximum deviation of fifty or hundred feet. Like right. you can go up to two thousand one hundred feet and correct. below up to one thousand nine hundred feet, correct, right? Correct. So that's how they test you on the standards, correct, and correct. the bank on the steep turn goes up to sixty degree. Correct. Correct. Yes. Correct. Correct. And uh, you can't lose the altitude yes, while, while banking because yes. your lift you lose the lift because you are you know steep. Yes, bank, and so. basically, if you lose the altitude, it's a safety issue because if correct. there's any traffic around correct, you, correct, it's, it's correct. very unsafe. Definitely. So definitely. that's why they train commercial pilot to handle uh, all the emergencies and to maintain the flight level, correct, to maintain correct, the correct, speed correct, while correct, landing correct, correct. and be aware about all. the other things and getting a cpl or getting a commercial pilot license that is a great it's a great achievement and with that you yes. have a privileges you can carry passengers yes. on board yes. that's the yes. privilege and uh, after that then you prepare for the ln interview and then you join an airline as a gfo so as a commercial pilot license a uh, pilot can carry passengers for remuneration so he gets paid for it yes. as a private pilot license you can carry passengers but you cannot do it for remuneration that means you cannot yes. charge can maybe carry friends or family members but not charge them for that that is the difference like you have to split the cost equally among yourself yeah like that's true now we will dive into what after cpl and when you get selected in an airline then how your career progression goes in an airline so after hmm. like i get a cpl hmm. then you prepare for the airline and then yes. you go for the airline interviews so after you get selected how do you get inducted into the airline what all training do you go through what are the designations you get and yes. what's the starting salary of the pilot i yes. mean everyone here wants to know what what is the salary of a pilot so today uh, captain neha will uh, tell us about the salaries yes now we are going to start with the very first so before you when you get started with the salaries what all you have to undergo so as a cpl holder when there is any vacancy comes up for any airline then yes of course airline to airline the process of selection will vary and uh, as that process is completed of course there are various types of vacancies which come up in an airline we'll talk about it in some other video and um, like there could be vacancy for you know either 
कैंडिडेट पायलट्स और देर कुड बी वेकेंसी फॉर सी पी एल होल्डर्स और देर कुड बी वेकेंसी फॉर टाइप रेटेड पायलट्स और देर कुड बी वेकेंसी फॉर एक्सपीरियंस टाइप रेटेड पायलट्स और देर कुड बी यू नो वेकेंसी फॉर द कैप्टन्स सो इट कुड बी ऑफ वेरियस टाइप्स इफ यू आर अ सी पी एल होल्डर वी आर कंसिडरिंग नाउ यू गेट सिलेक्टेड एज अ सी पी एल होल्डर इन एन एयरलाइन आफ्टर दैट दी पर्टिकुलर एयरलाइन कम्स अप फॉर सर्टन रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर टाइप ऑफ एयरक्राफ्ट एंड यू नीड टू अंडर गो दी टाइप रेटिंग ऑन दैट एयरक्राफ्ट सो इन दैट मीन पीरियड वेन यू हैव गॉट सिलेक्टेड इन एन एयरलाइन टिल द टाइम यू आर ऑन अ पेरोल पेरोल एज इन यू गेट पेड सैलरी टिल दैट टाइम यू आर ऑन अ लेटर ऑफ इंटेंट बाई दी एयरलाइन विच इज़ वैलिड फॉर सर्टन पीरियड एंड देन इन दिस mean period you will be undergoing the type rating so type rating is nothing but it is a specialized training on that particular aircraft where you will be learning to fly that specific type of aircraft like if in case uh, you know how to drive a bmw you can still drive a mercedes but that is not the case yes, for yes. the aircrafts you need a specialized type rating for every aircraft as a co-pilot and as a PIC depending on what designation it is so to begin with you will be doing your type rating once you do it it goes for endorsement mm-hmm. and then you are a type rated pilot pay views like if if someone has done their cpl hmm. okay hmm. so should he directly he or she directly apply for the job or do their type rating on their own and then apply for the job so this is one of the very commonly asked yes. question by a lot of students so if in case there is any particular aircraft which is quite a bit in quite a lot in demand at that time and that on that aircraft the vacancies are coming up those aircrafts are coming up really fast in that particular country then i really suggest that then you can go for the type rating come back because then the type rating pilot vacancies will come up but if in case you're not very sure about it so there are pros and cons of this so if in case you're not very sure you let's say someone does type rating on boeing 737 and then airbus 320 type rated pilot vacancy comes up then that pilot if he cannot apply for he 320 can. type rated pilot vacancy so he will have to undergo another cpl pilot vacancy or have to do type rating again i know personally some people and some of my students who had to do type rating on two aircrafts and they ended up spending on both the aircrafts because they did type rating on 737 but vacancy was for cpl, CPL holders holder. and then they ended up again doing and paying for the type rating which is a lot of amount so basically for if in case you do your type rating in uh, by yourself it will cost about 20 12 to 15 lakhs but if you do it with airline it will cost you about 25 to 30 lakhs and let's say if you are type rated on that aircraft even 320 mm. for that matter and you get selected in an airline then also there is a airline a specific type rating which you have to do which okay. is a bridged course which is a specific to that particular airline so you end up spending about 25 to 30 lakhs anyways okay. so after doing type rating you yeah. have to again like there is go, a just few it depends on company certain like number of and depending yes. on when you have done okay. uh, the uh, type rating because there is a type rating uh, validity the validity of type rating is only 3 years if in case okay. if within one year you don't start flying that aircraft then you have to do three sessions if in two years you don't start flying then you have to do six sessions if in three years don't start flying you have to do the entire type rating once again so the validity is only three years and that is the reason in those three years you must start flying on that aircraft in order to use utilize that type rating otherwise you have to do that same aircraft type rating all over again or if you get selected in some other airline with the another mm. aircraft then you have to do the type rating 
once again so that is the i would say risk factor or the requirement to end up spending more on type rating and plus when you do two different types of aircraft type rating you are jumbled up in your mind so badly with so many instruments and so many procedures that sometimes you end up messing up while doing the second type rating yeah so hmm. after type rating what's what's next so once you are type rated thereafter airline will select you as a junior first officer once you are a junior first officer you are on a payroll that means you get paid salary of course the salaries which we are going to talk about here are the average salaries it will vary a lot from airline to airline and we are not talking about any particular yes, airline but it will vary it is it a depends range. on type of aircraft yes. as well. you are yes, flying an aero definitely. body or a white body yes. yes yes so this all salaries would be uh, i guess on narrow body on yeah let's say we were we are talking about some narrow body airplane so as a junior first officer the salaries would vary between 80000 to 1 lakh that is the time when you start go, uh, you know learning that particular airline procedures so there is a ground class which you have to do in which you learn all the drills like ditching drill then slide drill then fire drill as well as uh, you know in emergency procedures then that particular airline company procedures you will be learning and uh, so that's a great experience of uh, you know all the Dif- everything is new and you are so excited yes. at that time that you every day is you look forward to that what is the new thing that you will be learning next day and uh, then there are you know you again end up revising all the performance of that aircraft as well as you will be doing all the systems of that aircraft the entire ground training is uh, you know taken care of after this then you start doing your super numeracy that is your observation flights on this aircraft because observation back sitting ha uh, back sitting back yes sitting. yes you back go sitting. in you go into the cockpit hmm. as a passenger or maybe as a student as a, uh, as as a, a student as a trainee pilot trainee as pilot. a jfo okay. okay and then uh, you keep learning these uh, new things which are you know how to do rt how to fill up the mcdu and then you just learn these things in that phase as well as captain would ask certain questions which are the part of you know which are practical questions what do you do in certain situations mm-hmm. as well as you know there are memory items which is required and must to, to know at any point of time so like for example tcas or gpws what you do so these things you will be learning and you will be asked questions regarding when you consider you know when you talk about the super numeracy of flying so there are certain number of sectors you have to do let's say you know 30 sectors and after that there is something called as the supervised line flying or slf so slf is something where you learn to fly that plane yourself as a first officer so there will be a trainer who will be guiding you and who will be training you but yes it is a phase wherein you need to be really really working hard to incre- increase your skills every other day because if you go to the cockpit for the first time since you are going to fly that aircraft for the first, first time, time. it is a lot of things going on around like doing the procedures listening to the atc as well as the outside weather as well as handling you know uh, the uh, cabin crew calls and then rest of the things so these things really need to be taken care of and you it's, really need to be it's quite yes. demanding from yes. you yes it's like yeah. a private pilot license for a junior first officer yes. like the t- initial fees correct so when you are a junior first officer again your stripes are now two, two. <laughs> in most yes. of the airlines it is two as a junior first officer because 
so you get now downgraded from 3 to 2 <laughs> now as a airline pilot <laughs> but that is yeah. an airline yeah, stripe yeah that is okay. an airline stripe so that is a not a student as a flight school yeah, stripe yeah a flight school stripe yes so as an airline again it goes to to stripe so that's how every flight you have to prove every flight you have to perform well and once you perform and uh, complete the specified number of flights or number of hours depending on the requirement then you will be undergoing a check once that check is cleared thereafter you will be released to fly as a first officer so from a junior first officer become a first, first officer. officer then the salary goes from 80000 to 1 lakh which was there as a j42 it will go to 2 to 2.5 lakhs okay so, so that that's almost double than what yes. a jfo is making yes and what about this stripe like is it 2 or 3 so it depends on airline to airline okay so some airlines do offer uh you know a uh, three stripes some airlines do offer uh, keep stripe. let keep the, you yes. keep the two stripes for certain hours so that again depends on the airline policy but uh, now you are a first officer now you are a re- released first officer and now once you are a released first officer you can fly with the line captain any captain you don't have to fly with a trainer now yes. you don't have to fly with the one who will instruct you who will be now you are you flying know. the plane you're not yes. a student anymore hmm. yeah <laughs> now you are a, <laughs> though you, you are a student. everybody is student all the time but still but officially as a you are not a designation student. Yes. you are not a junior first officer you are a first officer so that is about a first officer and then you keep flying 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 you keep gaining more and more experience and you keep uh, learning yourself every other day make sure that all those mistakes are not done again if in case it is done or uh, then once you you can start writing the atpl exams okay now you are flying also and you have to study as study well. as well atpl exams so. are the one which are required to be eligible to become a captain on that aircraft which has all up weight of more than 5700 kg okay so if in case someone is flying on the smaller corporate airplane which has less than 5700 kg all up weight then they don't require atpl to be a captain by experience they get promoted to captain but if an aircraft is greater than that weight then you need atpl to be eligible to be a captain okay and you can give atpl at any time or any s- certain specific yeah. amount of hours is required for it you don't need any hours to give atpl you can write the atpl uh, as you have cpl you know with you once you have cpl you can hmm. give atpl you can write time. atpl once okay. you write the atpl exam and clear it then you have to clear viva as well okay after exam there's viva yeah so viva you need to clear within 2 years from the date of the written exam result okay okay and once you have viva cleared then from that result your atpl is valid that paper is valid for another 5 years okay and within those 5 years you need to have your atpl license issued so, so you need to get you need to become a captain in those 5 years not a captain you need to have atpl license issued okay so now atpl license requirement is 1500 yeah i completed the atpl hours requirement when i had 1900 hours so it is uh, not like 1500 hours you get so yeah once you have the hours which takes about so for me it took me 2 years to complete a uh, total of 1900 hours from yeah 2 so years you yes. flew like 950 hours a yeah, year yeah uh, a year on an average 850 hours okay. i flew in those 2 years and in 2 years That's a lot. i got yeah atpl so it is like uh, amazing like you know in aviation if you are dedicated and if things are in favor 
then yes uh, you know you career progression is like crazy, crazy. at a steep rate and um, it is it is a great thing in no other profession the career progression is as is not that fast great. as this so your i got it in two years and um, then now again there is a hike you know salary okay. and then now you are a senior first officer once you have atpl issued as a license okay. so you submit the documents thereafter uh, you know with the papers then you have a license once you have the license then the salary goes to about 3 to 3.8 depending on yeah the airline again double so <laughs> again again it increases yeah around yeah 3.8 or so once you have this now you are eligible to be a captain of course every airline has different requirement and depending on the demand of the captain the requirement will vary even if you consider one particular airline so let's say it is 2500 hours so another 5 6 months or maybe 8 months you fly as a senior first officer now and then you are called for an interview for command upgrade so 6 months and another upgrade so basically you are called for interview but then the entire training phase of a captain is another 6 yes. months which is again another intense training phase so it's yeah. like training every day <laughs> like like when yes. when when does the training stop like after <laughs> captain or is there something it, the training doesn't stop as a pilot if you consider every 6 months you have irppc check okay okay so basically it is not for a check that you really study but you would study for yourself and for your flight safety you will really learn and make sure that you know the adequate things and situationally you are aware that yes this is something which you might have to do in case of certain situation occurring and you do review it before the take off before the you know landing if in case there are certain relevant things like memory items which you have to like for example pilots will review what would happen if in case there is a reject take off before every take off yes before every flight pre departure so you pre departure briefing right yeah so you basically prepare yourself to do that and admit that you will do this in this situation so that you are there and it doesn't come to you as a startle effect if in case so this is how you prepare yourself so irppc is there every 6 months so i don't believe what myself is, what is irppc ir is instrument rating so instrument rating is valid for one year okay so you need to renew it every year and ppc is pilot proficiency check which is valid for 6 months so, so that has to be done every 6 months okay. so if in case this is a requirement by dgca so that if in case there is any kind of malfunction or a failure or an emergency pilots are prepared to do it so they have done it at least in a simulator few okay. months ago so that it doesn't it is not very rusty for them because pilot profession being more of skill based it is re- important that they need to apply these procedures well the way it is supposed to be applied and not do some random things at any time yes so that Especially is the reason in, in an emergency when things are not under their correct, control correct 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 okay. correct because normal procedures you do it every day if there is any abnormal thing that comes to you then you need to be ready to take it or to handle it that is the reason why we are paid so much yes okay so you need to prove in those times that yes this salary is justified you know and uh, you need to yes really do a good job in that case so for that dgc ensures that there is a check every 6 months okay so, so after sfo so sfo you mentioned the salary is around 3.5 to 4 lakh depending upon the airline hmm. 
so and after that what what's next the captain after that then you are you have to undergo the entire you know captain command selection process first and then a command training so of course this these stages will also have certain variations depending on the airline in the initial stages but the command training will have of course the interview thereafter there will be simulator check there will be certain ground training there will be again simulator for the whole command training but in the j4 time as a type rating there is a long 2 to 2 and a half months of type rating yes but now this is not for that long this is only about you know a uh, 12 sessions of simulator because now you are flying that aircraft already for so long and uh, it is a transition from right seat to left, left seat. seat so it's more of your decision making skills are assessed in case of command training because you are going to be a pilot in command, command. of the airplane every decision that you take finally does matter a lot then you have to again undergo the slfs supervised line flying which is with the trainer now you will be learning to fly from the left, left seat. seat and instructor will be on the right so you will see some trainers sometimes are on the left seat sometimes on the right seat so, so this, this is because <laughs> of the reason like this if they are training co pilots trainee co pilots they are on left seat if they are training trainee captains they are on right seat. right seat so this is the reason so now you are a trainee captain then there will be certain number of uh, slfs where they will check what how you are performing whether you are performing well and you are being assessed every day again every day is your check okay it's not officially said as check but every day is your assessment you are being assessed over because the trainer will write all your reports every day after you are done with the slfs then there are 10 different route checks 10 different 10 different route checks. checks by examiners okay and they will check you for every action that you do especially in such cases you need to take the aircraft from one place to another safely they might ask you certain questions related to certain situations and your decision on that and um, yeah so after 10th route check i'm sure that is the check which you would remember for your lifetime so i had my 10th route check landing into hyderabad and that landing i cannot forget it was the first time on the left seat i have landed so in the rain in hyderabad at night time and with the very bad weather around so as a first officer you are not allowed to land in such weather this is the first time i have landed in that weather with some crazy crosswind with crazy weather and at night and it was a great landing and that is the time where i cleared that check and i still cannot forget that moment and captain is like yes you deserve it you are the captain now thank you thank <laughs> you <laughs> so it was a great experience and that was the time when i cleared 10th route check and then your documents are submitted to dgca for pic endorsement once it is submitted there oh uh, then once you get it then there is a release check that's the time when you have a next upgrade to a captain so you get the four, four stripes. stripes so as a senior first officer you get three stripes and then so again it depends on airline to airline some airlines give three stripes after certain hours some airlines give three stripes after after you get atpl so that is then when you are released as a captain the stripes change from 3 to 4 and yes i do remember that day is a remarkable day 
and yes you would remember it for your rest of the lifetime and so. uh, what about this salary like as the <laughs> captain how this much because like people are very curious like there are so yes. many uh, like things going up in the market yes so what do you think like how much uh, does a captain earn in an airline so this is a line released captain so of course um, various airlines have various ranges but even certain airlines have certain different contracts wherein there are less number of uh, leaves to more number of leaves of course you have lesser number of leaves then you fly more and if you have more number of leaves then you fly less so if you are on the higher flying contract then yes your salary is more if you are on a lower flying contract then salary is less that goes without saying but on an average it will range from somewhere about 5 and 1/2 lakhs to 7 lakh that is somewhere that that's the range of uh, okay. the uh, pilot salaries and that's how that's what captain makes that is again if you gain experience in that particular airline you will have more, there is more yeah plus so in in, in such a short span you start as a junior first officer in around salary of 70000 to 1 lakh rupees to and a captain in 3 years 3 to 4 like years depending on just 3 years just i three got years. released as a first officer to captain release was 3 years and in 3 years from like 1 lakh to 6 lakh that's that's yeah. uh six times in 3 years yes, so every yes, yes. every year it's it's doubling yes, your like salary yes, is doubling yes. and you are climbing the career progression very steeply yes 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 that's right that's that's, right. that's great <laughs> so that is uh, how it is for a captain once you are a captain then majority of the pilots will be captain if you stay on the same aircraft okay if in case someone wants to fly let's say from 320 to someone wants to fly airbus 350 or someone wants to fly 380 and if that is the case then of course you get again demoted to a first officer okay so unless like you have way to more hours like 6 7000 hours then there are certain programs wherein there is a direct entry to the captain as a from even 320 captain to 380 captain or 350 captain but that's very rare generally it is you get demoted to a first officer in that case so that is about a captain what next like after captain is there anything or uh, yes the there is a trainer uh, so there is something called as uh, the line training captain so like when i said when you are a junior first officer you will be trained by a trainer, trainer. which is ltc and when you are a trainee captain you will get trained by the ltc so that is the next step of career okay. progression so of course this particular uh, requirement will vary depending on the company so ltc it's a even more challenging uh, you know job because you are training very new first officers anything that goes wrong it's finally your responsibility because he is a trainee that person doesn't know much and that's why it is quite challenging he is not familiar with you as well like he's flying yeah. with that with person that for the first time that happens otherwise also that okay. doesn't matter so that is uh, how it goes so what happens is when you are a ca- junior captain when you just get released as a mm. captain you fly with senior first officers when okay. you get experienced as captain you will fly with junior first officers so you anyways reach a point where you are that much confident to you know handle, handle the, the rest, of, rest of the things but uh, still it gets challenging when it comes to a trainer then, then yes the salary the salary of ltc <laughs> <laughs> the salary here on goes uh, about a lakh or a lakh and a half more okay, in this so case. around 7 to 8 lakh rupees around 7 to 8 lakh rupees okay, as that's a, for ltc that's for ltc and what's what's next after Now, ltc next after ltc is 
not a flying job as much okay. it is into a simulator when you gain about 5000 5500 hours of experience then uh, so you keep flying as ltc and then train people and all of that and then now the job is to train and conduct the simulator checks checks so i wouldn't say it is a check it is more of a training session in a simulator okay so there are two days in the simulator one is the practice session because you will be handling those emergencies which i mentioned that irppc yes. every six months so in that there are two days one is the handling session which is practice session which is about uh, which is like handling the aircraft in different emergency situations so since you are flying and doing those emergencies after so long you need to get hang of it before you go for check okay so the training session and if you do any mistakes the trainer who is a tri will guide you that this has to be done in a certain way so that is a tri then again there is another lack of upgrade or you know lack or so approximately so after after ltc it's tri after ltc it is type rating instructor type rated instructor okay hmm. so there are again lot of uh, stringent you know interview and presentations need to be given after that so at tri it becomes even 1 lakh more which okay. is about 9 lakh rupees somewhere so this is all rough figures okay yeah in general like in around general, 9 lakh rupees for nine, a tri 9 9 and a half or sometimes 8 and a half so depending on an airline and then next is examiner when you have another more thousand hours of experience then you are an examiner now you can conduct the checks on a simulator as well as take the command route checks so that is the examiner where the salary is about 10 so this is per month per month 10 <laughs> lakh rupees so this is the salary yes per month that is that is without tax or with tax <laughs> <laughs> this is this is all uh, gross mostly and then okay. you end up paying chunk of tax every year like a lot so that is about the pilot career progression which is a very steep curve if you are really yes. dedicated you start you start as a student pilot get your private pilot license your mm-hmm. instrument rating then you go for your commercial pilot license then you join an airline as a junior first officer then you get promoted as a first officer senior first officer then you become a captain then line training captain and after that you become a tri, TRI. type rated instructor after that you become an examiner, examiner. Right. so if you are really dedicated it takes about 10 years to go to all the way the top. to reach to the examiner stage of course not everyone reaches there and everyone is willing to reach there once you are a captain then many of them stay there stay at that stay as a captain and yeah. just fly so with that said let's wrap up this episode hope you have gained information regarding the salaries and career progression for a pilot so thank you for sharing all this information and uh, we'll see you all in the next one please do like share and subscribe and let us know in the comment section what all topics you want us to have podcast on thank you have a good day have a wonderful day thank you so much for tuning in and staying till here